righty, well, here I am in Connecticut with my shy luthier friend, and I won't mention his name, um, because then you'd owe him about a billion dollars for use of his private property. But anyway, what I have here is, um, he's turned this over to me um, for my, a lot of people don't know this, I'm actually really more known for breaking guitars, but once in a while I fix one. So this one is gonna be one of those projects, and I believe it's an L50, uh, from the late 30s, early 40s. So anyways, and we'll follow the journey of this uh, guitar from what it looks like now, which is seen better days. But we will, um, we will prevail and we will make this into a, uh, a nice guitar that's going to be used only to play good music. Okay, so we'll just by humans, for humans. Okay, so, um, all right, we'll, uh, we'll get back to you on that. Thanks for watching so far, hope this helps. Someday, hopefully, um, this guitar here, this guitar here will grow up and be something like this. I don't know. Um, I don't know what kind of guitar this is. There's no, there's no labels. It's, uh, it's a really nice guitar, and the uh, author of this guitar wants to remain nameless. Um, so we'll just call them Nameless Guitar Company. Show them the headstock. Nameless Guitars. That sure is a gorgeous headstock, isn't it? Play it flat. And it's curly maple, walnut, more curly maple. Spruce, nice, it's, uh, real wood it's cedar. pick guard. It's oh, cedar. sorry, that's cedar. I'm sorry. Look at that brass uh, tailpiece, too. Oh, man. This sure is nice. Hey, what's the neck angle on this? Uh, Two degrees? I think it's one degree. <laughs> one degree, okay. All right, well, uh, that's all I got for this one. And thank you. So I'm going to need to make a mold to uh, hold the sides in while I repair the, um, the back and the sides. So I'm going to start by cutting two 20 by 25 pieces of plywood. Okay, so here's part one. A 20 by 24 square and a couple of uh, 10 by 24s and another 10 by 24. Now in the middle I can fill this in with pallet wood for the extra inch if I want to which I think I'm gonna do. Anyways first step is just glue another piece on there and screw it on down with I don't bother trying to clamp it. I just put a bunch of screws in there. Just screw, screw it down and remove them after. All right, here's the first layer. And no, I didn't buy this plywood with the ridiculous plandemic prices. Um, it was, uh, I just found it under the bed mattress. And uh, I'm going to fill in the next layer. I'm going to use pallet wood because I'm cheap. I got 50 cents of the first dollar I ever earned. I'm that cheap. Well, it's not fine woodworking, but what is when you're using a handheld jigsaw or sorry, rotary saw? Um, the top one. So these are glued. Um, the top one I'm going to leave uh, removable so that, you know, I can uh, apply clamps there and get the guitar out of the mold easy um, once it's in there. So I need this mold to take 
the back. This is actually going to be used on two projects that I have, both the same size guitar. One's probably an L48 or something unidentified, and then the L50. Um, the front's got to come off the L50, and the back's got to come off the other one. So I'm not sure which video this is going to end up in. Probably the first one, the L48. Anyways, onward. Alrighty, so, so what I did was, I just cut out like a rough shape of the guitar, about an inch wider, and I traced a rough outline of it on the underside of this, and then I taped it, cut, actually, so, then I cut this out so it fit inside or outside of the arch so it lie down flat okay and then i taped it onto the guitar and just kind of put a piece of wood under as i went around to make a really accurate trace of the outline and then i glued it down now i'm going to find the center line and then it's time to get off to the bandsaw and cut this sucker out Alrighty, well, there's the mold cut for the 150, but, uh, sorry, the L50, and uh, there it is. I'm, gonna, I'm thinking I'm going to put a hinge on there and make this kind of adjustable so I can kind of tighten it or loosen it from there. Okay, here it is. Ready to receive. Here, this one. And there you go. She's gonna kind of live in there for a few weeks or a week or so while I pull the back off and repair it. And hopefully glue it back together alrighty never ending right so after a minimal amount of cursing and ganashing my tephises the back came off I want to take a good look in here this is really nice quality I was looking in uh, the field guide of vintage guitars, and uh, I'm pretty sure this is a wartime, no-name Gibson. They made some during the war that didn't have a name designation. And here's the back. I got a little crack glued there already. I'm gonna have to give this a good brush down and start gluing it all back together here. All righty. And here's the first brace on the back. Glued down. All righty. Progress on my wartime arch top. This is the last of the uh, braces glued down. And um, that black stuff responded quite well to um, zip strip. Haven't touched that, but I got rid of all that. Contrary to what my friend who gave me this guitar who will call the witness said he tried it i think he must have been trying something else ah yeah haven't had the dusty old spool clamps out in a while doing a little preliminary gluing before I attack this. Wow. Yeah. 
here's me gluing the ear on with my patented L.A. Jones clamp assembly. Ha 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 ha. Alrighty, more side repair going on. Wow. Oh yeah. Creative clamping 101. I'm using some of the kerfing that fell out, flipped around to glue in some of the random stray kerfing before gluing the top to it. Now that I've stabilized the body somewhat, after gluing all this kerfing back in there and uh, gluing the top down in a couple of spots, I've taken my trusty Fordham flexible shaft and I've cut this into a less ragged shape. I'm going to uh, just put a piece of wood behind here and trace it and cut a plug of sorts in here. That's what I'm going to do, George. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, Mr. Finger, go away. So to make a plug for that hole, and first thing I do is just soak this tentative piece of wood. It's a nice piece of maple. I soaked it overnight in water. And I'm going to boil it in water for like, uh, you know, five minutes. More kitchen recipes. Bear in mind, I did this after my wife left for work. Then I simply clamp it in the mold and leave it alone for eight hours while I go and work on Chinese junk. And there's the plug ready for sanding, zip stripping, finishing, etc., etc., and some idiot to come along in 50 years and put another jack in there and pop it out again. And here's me gluing some nice waterlogged furring strips in around the big patch, shoring up that uh, long crack. Yeah, all right. I wonder if I can fit any more clamps in here. So I got the, you can't see it really, but it's in there. The plug is glued in there. And at the same time, I glued a patch on the back. Just bent it on in there. Nice and thin patch on there. So that is taken care of for the most part that gaping hole that was in there. Ouch. Soon no more ouchy. Alrighty, oh sweetie. Yeah, it's coming a long way. Uh, all I really have to do left with this body here um, is uh, I'm just going to clean out the insides um, glue some, some, uh, maybe glue some, uh, wood or gauze. I think I'll glue some gauze in there, like, kind of like the gauze they glued here. It's probably, it's soaked, I'm guessing, with, uh, hide glue. So maybe I'll put some of those in there and then give the whole thing a good sanding and cleaning inside there all right and then glue the back that's been sitting there patiently waiting to go back on i'll glue the back back and then comes the fun part all right i got most of the kerfing glued back this piece was lost in the mists of time so i'm gonna uh i'm just gonna make one duplicate it Okay, gulp. 
I'm getting ready to glue the back on here and to this end I have marshaled all my clamp brigade. I've recruited every single clamp that has any bearing on this upcoming progress, uh, process that is. Alrighty, I'm not going to show the process, but I will show the result afterwards. Stay tuned. Well, as Pine Top Perkins once said, ain't that a mess? There it is, all glued down. And uh, that's past the point of no return right now, I think. So, onward. And ever onward. Well, I've never wished a pox on anyone until now. Whoever painted this black put, I'd like to contact them and find out what they use because I'd like to I got some leaks in my roof that I'd like to patch with this stuff okay so the only tool that you use when you're scraping roofing tar off a 40s guitar is your great grandfather's Remington knife made by said grandfather this was my boy scout knife all right down to it and like that what i'm going to try once i get the bulk of it scraped is i'm going to go back and I'm going to paint a thin coat of uh, stripper on there and then hit it with a stripper and coarse steel wool. I want to get this down because I'm thinking, I'm thinking, cherry burst. Maybe cherry burst. Etc. Etc. All right. Man, this top is ugly. Ready for sanding. Now, all I gotta do is the back, the sides, the neck, and uh, refret it. Um, and, uh, oh my God. Small steps. Creative clamping by L.A. Jones. Clamping the uh, headstock veneer on. Well, all right, look what I got from Portugal. I don't know what that is. Let's check it out. Oh. Hmm. Whoops. Oh, yeah. That's going to look nice on my uh, two Gibson projects. Nice. What a beautiful day here in St. Louis. Spring solstice right around the corner. And here's my maple overlay. Belt sanded. And here's the body getting ready for sanding and binding. All righty, here's a preliminary sanding of the top looking pretty good compared to what it was yeah let's try the back and sides okay don't take this the wrong way um i'm gonna use this on some of the uh imperfections in the guitar i think fender used this stuff it looks just like the stuff that fender used in the old days well i got this all sanded out to 150 or so and uh it's 
looking good, man. I'm going to, uh, next I'm going to uh, put the, uh, the side dots in the neck. I've already drilled the holes for the side dots. For the left-handers among us, uh, you know, for the 30% of the population that wants to uh, play a left-handed instrument. So, yeah, onward. Now that I got it rough sanded, I'm going to finish uh, routing out the uh, binding cavities. Fun, fun, fun! So here's the top binding channel cut. I used this uh, Stumac with the adjustable blah bitty blah blah. Now I'm going to do the back. I'm going to let this cool down a little bit. It got a little warm. It's probably okay. But, uh, you know, I dug, I dug the channel out a little deeper and a little taller just to clean it out. All righty. And making progress. Now, this originally didn't have binding on the back. Whoops! There goes my give up. Beep! Alrighty. I'm too cheap to buy the uh, plain white. And my buddy's donation didn't work with his white celluloid. It was too thin. So I went and bought this stuff on eBay. It's, uh probably can't see. It's a white celluloid. I have looked and looked. I, they just don't make plain white celluloid anymore. And uh, so I glued on some white celluloid binding. It'll look good. I promise. Alrighty. And here's the back binding glued down. And I let it sit overnight just so the plastic can reharden, etc., etc. It's looking good. Kind of cool. All right. Got the uh, binding all glued in and sanded. I'm not a huge fan of this, uh, this pearl, but it's the only celluloid I could find that wasn't completely out of the question uh, expense wise uh, the last time I bought celluloid binding from the USA it cost me about 150 bucks for one guitar plus hazardous shipping blah 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 and uh, so no hazardous shipping where does that line some politicians pockets anyways uh next step is going to be to just sand this whole thing from top to bottom with uh 220 and then i'm going to dye it yellow i'm going to do a sienna burst i'm not going to do the cherry burst because it's just too modern they didn't do that during the war so I'm going to do a iced tea style burst, I think. Maybe a little darker, but something like that. All righty. Onward. All right. Rummaging in my stash. Not my mustache, just my stash. I found this old vintage Gibson. And I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a left-handed slightly modified version of that to go on this base and then when i was just a kid i was messing around i'm not sure if i'm going to use this on this or not but this is exactly properly this was uh i think this was copied off an early uh d'angelico or something 25 i don't i don't know pick guards kind of a they kind of get in my way. I'm not really a big fan of pick guards, but in this case, this seems to fit really good. And I was thinking of maybe putting a little stealth pot under there if I do decide to go with a pickup on this. 
I haven't quite made up my mind on that. Don't know what this tailpiece is, but it's definitely got the right proper patina and stuff. Just another one of those things I got along the way, 50 plus years of uh, messing around with guitars. Anyhow, onward. Got it all sanded to 120, or sorry, 220. Um, I'm going to yank the frets and address the fretboard before I do any, uh, any finish work. Just in case I butcher anything, I can cover it up really well. That's half the battle of being a woodworker, is basically just covering your tracks. All righty. Frets quickly removed. Now I got to cut the truss rod out of its prison. Here's a tool I've had since I was a teenager. It's <laughs> it still works. It's a little uneven. Just a set of end nippers ground flat. Not like the Stumac fancy gadget, but it still works really fine. Everything's a mess until it isn't. So here I am filling in some low spots that were worn down by too many cowgirl cords. Um, this is a 10 inch radius neck, or it was. Up here it's still 10. And uh, down here it was like, it's really worn down. So uh, yeah, filled it in with some crazy glue which I don't usually use but in this case I do um, with uh, rosewood dust crazy glue it's crazy where's my hard hat all right I got a lot of the uh, super glue which isn't so super before I go any further, I'm going to um, put just a little tension on the truss rod so that when I loosen it, it'll have a slight bow to it so that we can have some adjustment either way. Not too much, just a scooch. All right, looking pretty level now on three planes. I usually test it on the outer, the inner, and the other outer. So yeah, it's looking good. I'm gonna double check it. Uh, but I'm going back inside because it's snowing here in April in St. Louis. Too cold. Well, it's a beautiful day here in St. Louis. April 2022. And I'm progressing with my refretting here, turning this wartime Gibson into a blues machine. Got some nice high frets there, big fat. And uh, yeah, and I do this to, you know, I scatter them around to uh, reduce the chance of fret-induced backbow. Fret-induced backbow. All right, onward. And we got the first coat of black on there. Just colorizing it. All righty. All righty. Well, all righty. Here's the frets banged in and ready to be trimmed and leveled. I also took the liberty of putting a little black and clear on the headstock. Looking rough, rough, but it all looks rough until it doesn't. Yeah. Got the ends trimmed and ready for a filing. Make sure you wear gloves when you file those edges. They're razor sharp, and I bear many scars 
from being too lazy to put some gloves on. Here's the two tools I use for this. This is my fret leveler, but I also use it on the side of the fretboard. All right, I just copied a Stuart McDonald uh, file, just I epoxied a file onto a nice piece of wood and uh, shaped it a little bit. This one I got from Brown's Guitar Factory and it holds it at a nice angle. And then you just run it along there until you can't run no more. Right. And wear gloves. So now we got them nice and level. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, level the tops and then round them. And by the way, when you're leveling the frets, start on this end and go work your way that way. You, it, it may seem obvious, but you want these frets higher slightly than these frets and then you kind of boat ramp it down at the end a little bit more so there you go nice and level here's an oldie but a goodie my fret crowning file i rough it down with this and then i hit it with the uh the diamond file i've had this for for decades. This was actually the first actual luthier tool that I ever bought. Oh, that's so no one <laughs> would mistake it for theirs. Like some guitar techs whose names I won't mention here. And wherever you are, may the bluebird of happiness fly up your nose. All right, the frets ready. The frets are ready for final polishing and sanding and polishing and sanding. All right, check that out. Here's something I don't do for my unwashed public customers. No offense, they just don't pay me enough to do it. And that is wet sand this fingerboard to 1200 and then buff the frets with my Fordham flexible shaft. Oh yeah. In fact, I can take the liberty of buffing the whole fingerboard because I'm just gonna clean it off later with some uh, uh, soap and water, I believe, takes it off. So you just look at that gleam on those frets. Would you please? It's a beautiful thing. Well, all right. Gleaming at you. Next step, the rock hard filler with epoxy. Look at that color perfect for filling maple and spruce yellow dye applied oh man that looks nice that looks nice oh yeah all right we got the yellow dye on and now we got our first coat of brown going around and uh yeah like that well, all right, this sunburst is starting to get where I like it. Finally getting some good weather here in St. Louis on a May 2022. I'm clear coating. I'm happy with the color tone of this sunburst. Got my banjo inlay, or sorry, binding. And uh, yeah clear coating. I like the green. I'm going to keep that. Alrighty. Well, I got a nice layer of clear down there. And uh, look at that. Nice, huh? All the way from where it was. Now, here's the uh, 
Look at that finish on this one soon to be compared to this one. They're pretty damn close, if I do say so myself, and I do. And here's what happens when you shoot lacquer on a muggy morning. Ha ha ha. No worries. I stopped before it got too ugly. Quick spray was all it took. I'll sand that off and start over when it's less than 110% humidity. Geez, all I did was try to hold her hand and she blushed like crazy. Okay, so here I am. Um, doing a wet sand on this now. It's been drying for a week with, I think, the final coat. So I'm gonna get it with the thousand grit all over until I get rid of the orange peel. And then I'm gonna let it dry for another week. Oh yeah, onward. Uh, kind of a grayish finish. Still some orange peel I gotta work out. Looking good, man. And here is the sweetheart of the blues inspecting my first draft buff. Oh my of this. God. Wait, let me get my mascara. I can put my makeup on. Oh, you don't need oh. makeup. On. It's, we're looking at the guitar. Let's look at the headstock. See, there's still some uh, some buffing. Uh, turn it over. Damn. There's some there's some buffing uh, rouge. Now the secret of buffing is you got to be in the buff. Be in the buff. Be when in the you buff, buff when you buff. Yeah. Woo! That's that's the secret of that. All right. And so I I think there's a couple of cloudy spots. I'm gonna have to go back with the coarse. Um, with the God, course, this is beautiful, and Man, then then hit it with medium this. and fine. Look at the binding! Holy cow, that's gorgeous! <gasps> yeah, whoa, yeah, it's nice, nice banjo binding. Wow, and then there's the back. Wow. A couple of cloudy spots. I'm gonna get in there. I don't and, see them. Yeah, I, I, there's a couple of spots right in here and stuff. Man. There's like orange peely. God, I can't even but, see. But uh, it. yeah, wow. it's it's close. It's fantastic. Oh, it's don't look at that. <gasps> oh, <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're funny. <laughs> oh, 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 righty. Man. Yep, and she's left-handed too, folks. She's got it all. <laughs> wow. Alrighty. All right, I got it buffed. And I've been soaking it in oil all night. Look at that finish. Oh, man. And I got these uh, very cool. It said 60s on the uh, on the package I had them stored in, but I think those are 50s Clusons. And. I'm trying to put it together, put strings on it. Damn, I mean, Sam, I want to play this. Huh? Oh, the horror. I found a recycled piece of ivory. At least he didn't die in vain, and I love elephants. Howdy, folks. Luthier Phineas Aloysius Jones on here with a uh, completed wartime restoration of a wartime Gibson. Um, who knows what? It's one of those unidentified models. I'm going to just play a little bit on it for you and then get out of here. Sugar. <laughs> Good girl. <laughs> 